I am incensed and infuriated once again by multiple Supreme Court rulings. The first Congressional District of South Carolina, which was recently declared by the federal court to be an unconstitutional gerrymander of its citizens, was allowed to stand by the Supreme Court as of yesterday. The questions and the answers are in the book, available on Amazon. They have previously declared that political gerrymandering is okay and would no longer take those cases for review as well. We have Justice Thomas declaring that Brown v. Board of Education 1952 was a mistake and the court had overreached, inferring that he believed the decision was wrong. Your rights are being stolen in plain sight. The Constitution wasn't giving you rights, which are God-given. It's there to protect you from a government stealing and perverting your rights, but that's what is happening. We now have three states that have laws on the books holding promoters of any gathering legally and fiscally personally responsible for anything that happens during that gathering, a rally, etc., with more on the way. It effectively discourages any gathering or rally. While the Supreme Court calls this prior restraint and is forbidden in the Constitution, the court allowed it to stand in defiance of the Constitution, which explicitly enshrines the right of citizens to assemble. The Supreme Court continually rules against itself and the lower federal courts, leading to a rat's nest of intertwined cases that they refuse to clarify or review. We have no say on who or how the people on the ballot are chosen, which is in fact the most important part of our election system. It's more important than the actual vote of the citizens, even if we believe that the vote count is correct. I've been doing this for 35 years and everything we do is important on the local scale. The problem is the big picture doesn't change and without changing the system all of everyone's hard work and effort get lost or forgotten after the next election. I understand that every different organization has their own agenda but the problem is that they all work for themselves and many times act to the detriment of the country as a whole. I have written and called to the guns rights groups, the ACLU, the local chapters of the NAACP, the JBS leadership, etc. with not a peep or response from any of them. The total work we do locally is tremendous but has little effect outside of our circle of people. We are preaching to the choir while they dismantle the church. We need a national movement, national consciousness of the problem and cure. We need a hook, so to speak. If Mr. Whipple can still sell toilet paper 40 years after being off the air and you can't get the Jardians jingle out of your head, we should be able to do the same with the Constitution. The United States government is working hand-in-hand -hand with the United Nations world government types to take away all your freedom and rights. Totally restrictive and confiscatory gun laws have been passed and are soon to take effect. Cars and trucks have been so legislated against for 30 years as to now be unaffordable to buy or repair. You will no longer be allowed to congregate or hold a rally unless blessed by the government, but without a vehicle you can't get there anyway. You won't be able to protect yourself, your family, or your home any longer because you don't have any weapons and can't even drive away as a last resort. I know, call the United Nations, look how well they have protected Israel, a nation with the total population of less than 10 million people, of which 2.5 million are Arab and smaller than the state of NJ against 1.9 billion Muslims. Ask yourself this, why does the United Nations condemn Israel when they did not start or continue the war? Why do they not condemn Hamas, Hezbollah, or Iran, who have been continually targeting civilians in a terror war for more than half a century? Why haven't United Nations peacekeepers been sent to them? Why has Russia not been condemned and United Nations troops been stationed on the Russia-Ukraine border? Putin's illegal war makes the Middle East war look like a brush fire. It's now a time for us to remember what it is to be human and to protect our rights. It's a time to remember this poignant quote from the late Golda Meir, former Israeli Prime Minister. When peace comes, we will perhaps in time be able to forgive the Arabs for killing our sons, but it will be harder for us to forgive them for having forced us to kill their sons. Peace will come when the Arabs will love their children more than they hate us. We are boxed in and cornered in a trap that we have allowed to happen. We can't run, we can't congregate, we can't protect ourselves. How about we petition our government that's in the Constitution? Let's get all of us to sign a document telling the government what we don't like and what we want. That will really change things, it sure will. Giving the government a signed gold-plated enemies list should really help our freedoms. The last and only choice left to us is to get back to the real Constitution and equal protection and representation under the law.
Article the first is that choice. Will it disrupt the political system? Will it upset the ruling class? Will it be difficult? Yes, yes, and yes. Is it better than a United Nations takeover, a civil war, or a revolution? Again, yes, yes, and yes. The questions and the answers are in the book available on Amazon Asin slash chash bod to zuan on gxwg. Brought to you by FirstAmendmentFreeSpeech.org.